Compliance is one of the main responsibilities of a broadcast engineer. And our job is not just to build and maintain the transmitter side in studios, but it is also to make sure that the station is in compliance and follows the rules. And we've seen what happens when stations don't follow the rules, they end up with fines. We don't want to do that. And if it's even more egregious, it may even result in the loss of the license of the station. For years, we had the FCC self-inspection checklist. And it was great because you could go down and say, okay, yes, I'm good with this. And yes, I'm good on that and good on this and that and that. But those things haven't been touched in 15 years. Rules have changed. Things have changed. Technology has changed. So there was no updates to it. So the Society of Broadcast Engineers spent some time in association with the National Association of Broadcasters and put together this self-inspection guide. It's updated for today. And basically they just launched it at the NAB show in Las Vegas this past April of 2024, and it's available on their website. I would recommend that you go and download this new self-inspection guide right after the video, <laughs> sbe.org. Go under legislative slash regulatory, and it's listed there as self-inspection guides. There's one for FM stations and one for TV stations. Now, I'm not gonna go into the details of the guides, but let's do kind of a quick peek inside at a few things so that way you kind of get an idea of what is in them. I'm part of a email list of small religious broadcasters from across the country, and there seems to be a trend. There's a lot of similar questions, a lot of the same questions that comes up from them. And one of which is, what is my station log? What do I need to put in my station log? There is a part of the self-inspection checklist I'm sorry, self-inspection guide that deals with the station log. Now the station log is a part of the greater station records, which will include uh, EEO stuff, public file, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, quarterly issues and programs, things like that. But the station log is definitely in your wheelhouse if you're an engineer and or the chief operator who is watching this. The FCC says the station log must be kept in an orderly and legible manner with sufficient detail to document the items logged. Now here's where you get into the checklist part. How long do you keep station logs? Section 73.1840 of the Code of Federal Regulations says two years. Are the latest required equipment performance measurements readily available? CFR section 73.15.90 tells you everything that you need to keep track of. The last thing about station logs that I'll kind of show and talk about here is if your chief operator, which may be you, are they reviewing the logs every week to ensure that they, they're getting done and B, that they are accurate and complete? And then C, is that chief operator or their designee signing off on the logs every week. Again, this is, that's a weekly thing every week. And I did make a video about station logs that I will link at the end of the video. Uh, when you get to the end, you can click on that one and learn a little bit more about station logs. How about programming related rules? Let's talk about those real quick. Are station identifications being made in accordance with section 73.1201? AKA once an hour as close to the hour as feasible at a natural break in programming? And is it formatted correctly, which is call sign and city of license? That's it, nothing else. Consult your communications attorney if you wish to have exceptions. Are you making the required announcements for sponsored content? How about payola and plugola? Strange terms for those who haven't been in radio before, but very important concepts to understand, if, especially if you have a smaller station. Do a Google search on Plugola and Payola and you'll see what those are. Hi, I'm gonna take a moment here and recognize the sponsor of today's video, LinkUp Communications. When your content has to get to your audience, you can count on their content distribution using XDS and other industry leading platforms. LinkUp has provided distribution solutions with the highest degree of reliability for over three decades. If you're wanting more information about their services or just 
who are they? Visit their website at linkupcommunications.com. And now, back to the video. Now, if you're a non-commercial education station, well, are you making commercial announcements? You shouldn't be. You should be making underwriting acknowledgements. And those have a very specific language to them that you can and can't do. Listen to an NPR station. Typically, those are done correctly, and you can kind of get an idea of what an underwriting acknowledgement is and how to do it. Okay, moving on. Uh, antenna stuff is in there too. Is your antenna structure registered? Are you monitoring tower lights? Uh, radio frequency exposure, is it within limits, permissible limits for occupational and public? Um, Again, these are all very technical things that need to be kept track of, but uh, you know, if you, you don't have to constantly be doing them. You just have to make sure that you are aware of them. Tower lights, you do have to constantly keep track of. Emergency alert system is a big part of broadcast. Um, I've talked about it before. I've made several videos about EAS stuff in the past. Uh, go check my channel for that and you'll see all these different uh, videos about EAS. Um, but are you doing EAS stuff? Are you monitoring your LP1, LP2? Are you receiving weekly tests? Are you sending weekly tests? Are you receiving a monthly test? All those fun things. Are you keeping track of things? Are you logging things, et cetera, et cetera? Again, part of your self-inspection guide. And I would highly recommend that after this video, in just a few moments here, that you open a new tab on this browser, go to the Society of Broadcast Engineers' website, download a copy of the self-inspection guide, and take a look through it. And go through it, maybe just tonight, go through it and off the top of your head, you know, yes, 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 we do this. Hmm, not sure about this, highlight this one. And then go back to the station, you know, next business day or so, and look at those ones that you weren't sure about. Make sure that you're in compliance, and if not, work towards becoming compliant. You don't have to send this guide into anybody. It's a checklist just for you and you alone. Uh, so don't send it to the FCC. Don't send it to the SBE. It's just for you, for your files. So anyways, that's all. And one last thing, one last thing. This guide is not a guarantee that you will not have an FCC inspection. You will not uh, run afoul of any of the many rules and regulations of the FCC, um, but it is a good starting point to make sure that things that are within um, your wheelhouse, your sphere of influence are compliant. So, and as always, your communications attorney is basically the final say in this because they are the ones that are gonna defend you against the FCC, against any investigations or things that come up. So with that said, go download that self-inspection guide, start filling it out for yourself. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.